5G is here and now. 3GPP has established a solid foundation for 5G deployments in release 15 and 16, and technology continues to evolve through release 17 and beyond. In this demonstration, we will focus on future innovations that will drive 5G wide area deployments in sub 7 gigahertz. These features improve network performance and efficiency and bring capabilities that will expand 5G to new, new use cases. The first key innovation we'll showcase here is our work in enabling full duplex massive MIMO. Today, most networks in mid-band and high-band operate in TDD fashion where uplink and downlink take turns to transmit. With full duplex, the network can transmit and receive simultaneously. Full duplex offers network flexibility, performance improvement, and a reduction in latency. Let's see how these two multiplexing schemes work. In the case of static TDD, downlink and uplink take turns. The first few slots are dedicated to downlink and then the air interface turns around to support uplink. With subband full duplex, a portion of the antenna resource and frequency resources are dedicated to uplink and the rest is given to downlink. Interference cancellation, which is a key concept in enabling full duplex, becomes more practical with this configuration. Uplink and downlink can happen simultaneously now. The notion of subband full duplex is an important step in enabling wide area full duplex and is significantly different from other approaches in the past. Let's now look at some simulation results. We can see that when subband full duplex is enabled in the network, all the users in the network, the 5th percentile, 50th percentile and 95th percentile users see substantial increase in their uplink perceived throughput while there is no impact at all on the downlink pursuit throughput. Subband full duplex is a paradigm shift and we believe that this can play a key role in future evolution of 5G networks. The second demonstration we have here is on positioning in 5G networks. 3GPP has added support for several positioning techniques in 5G building on the foundation of LTE-based positioning, including round-trip time, RTT, angle of arrival, angle of departure, and time difference of arrival. In this demo, we will compare an existing method, which is based on time difference of arrival, with multi-RTT plus angle of arrival. In OTDOA, one or two G node Bs cannot locate a device. We need at least three G node Bs. The G node Bs need to be tightly synchronized in time. This time synchronization is a challenge in network deployments. In addition, any non-line of sight adds further error to positioning accuracy. In RTT, the RTT measurement directly gives the distance of the device from the G node B. The AOA gives the direction of the device relative to the G node B. When these two are put together, even a single cell can locate the device in the network. Of course, with multiple RTT measurements, we can improve the positioning accuracy further. One key aspect of RTT-based positioning is that the G node Bs need not be synchronized in time, which is a huge benefit in network deployments. Let's now look at some simulation results comparing OTDOA with multi-RTT plus AOA. We can see that both for the median user at 50th percentile and the 80th percentile worst user, uh, multi-RTT plus AOA can substantially improve the positioning accuracy. Positioning is an important use case for 5G, and we are working on further enhancing positioning techniques, including device-based positioning.